This video will talk about intravenous fluids in pediatrics. So we start by examination. We assess the dehydration level. So dehydration is um, divided into three stages. We've got mild, moderate, and severe. Mild less than 5%, moderate 5 to 9, and severe more or equal to 10%. So how do we differentiate? So we'll start by consciousness state or conscious state. In mild, we've got uh, the child would be alert and responsive in moderate lethargic and irritable, while in severe, would we, he'd have uh, or she would have reduced conscious state. As for heart rate, it's normal in mild to moderate. In moderate, they could have mild tachycardia, while in severe, we'd find tachycardia. As for respiratory rate, uh, it will be normal in mild, increased in moderate, and increased in severe. Could be a deep acidotic breathing. As for blood pressure, it would be normal in mild and moderate, and in severe we'd find hypotension. Skin color, it will be normal in both mild and moderate, and pale or mottled in a severe dehydration. As for extremities, there will be warm in mild and moderate and cold in severe. Peripheral uh, pulses would be normal in mild and normal in moderate. They would be weak in severe dehydration. As for eyes and fontanelles, uh, not sunken, in mild, sunken in moderate, and deeply sunken in severe dehydration. Mucous membranes. For mucous membranes, it will be moist in mild, dry in moderate, and severe. As for skin turga, it will be there will be instant recoil in mild, and in moderate, it will be uh, mildly decreased and decreased in severe dehydration. As for central capillary refill, it will be normal in mild, prolonged in moderate, and markedly prolonged in severe. Okay, so the second, second thing we do is uh, we measure weight at least once daily. So we said about the dehydration and the weight. As for management, investigation, we start by uh, checking serum electrolytes and glucose. Before uh, starting the IV fluids uh, and during and uh, at least every 24 hours after starting. Could be uh, more frequent in sicker children. Now we also uh, check fluid balance. How do we do, how do we check fluid balance? It'll be by repeated weights and intake output charts. All right, so as for treatment, so the treatment, uh, we've got the resuscitation, which is uh, we give 10 to 20 milliliter per kilogram bolus of sodium chloride 0.9% stat. Then we reassess. Now, uh, for rehydration, so that's the resuscitation. Rehydration, in mild to moderate dehydration, we try enteral NG fluids, if possible. For severe, we probably, uh, we would, for severe, we just go for IV fluids. So how do we calculate IV fluids? So the total fluid requirement includes maintenance fluid plus deficit fluids, and ongoing losses. So the sum of these is the required uh, IV fluids. So how do we calculate deficit? There are two ways to calculate deficit. There's the pre-morbid weight. If we have the pre-morbid weight, we can calculate it using um, the pre-morbid weight in kilograms minus current weight multiplied some of the uh, the result is multiplied by thousand or weight by a percentage of dehydration by 10. So that's the second one. The percentage of dehydration can be determined according to the clinical signs. 
if we've got a less or equal 5% dehydration, the replacement would be over 24 hours, if more than 5% more slowly. Now for ongoing losses, um, by checking the output, or it could be uh, roughly 50 to 100 ml per stool motion for infants and 100 to 200 ml per stool for older children. Okay. Um, so maintenance, maintenance fluid. How do we calculate it? So it depends on the weight. So there are two ways we can calculate full maintenance uh, per day or we can calculate it per hour. The first 10 kilograms in, in a child's weight will be multiplied by 100 for full day maintenance and by 4 for per hour. The second would be by 50 and by 2 uh, for the per hour. And the third or the remaining kilograms would be multiplied by 20 for the full day maintenance and by 1 for the per hour maintenance until we reach 60 kilograms we reach the maximum requirement and then we give just 2400 ml per day or 100 ml per hour that's the maximum fluid we can give okay now uh, we give two-thirds of maintenance fluid because uh, in um, when the child is sick uh, they tend to, children are sick they tend to uh, retain fluids because of the increased ADH, antidiuretic hormone. And that uh, is obvious um, in acute CNS uh, and in uh, pulmonary conditions, acute CNS conditions and pulmonary conditions, okay? Um, also, it can be um, in post-operatively and in trauma. So, two-third, remember, two-third. Now, as for the choice of fluid, the standard fluid is sodium chloride 0.9% with glucose 5%, with 5% glucose. So that's the standard. We can use more than 5% glucose uh, in children with metabolic disorders, but that would be uh, more complicated with consultation with a specialist. As for potassium, it's best to use pre-mixed um, uh, IV fluid solutions. So the standard concentration would be 20 millimole per liter of um, KCL in a, in a liter of IV fluid. So it's best to avoid the addition of concentrated uh, solutions such as potassium chloride uh, because it is a safety risk and that could be but it could be done in in, cl in certain clinical conditions by uh, consultations with seniors or um, specialists. Now, when do we consider consultation? If you are unsure about the fluids you're giving, uh, but, uh, okay, and the second thing, if there's an electrolyte abnormality. Uh, third is if you're using a non-standard fluid the fourth uh, case is when there are significant morbidities and when uh, fluid resuscitation exceeds 20 ml per kg. Okay. Uh, as for uh, transfer, uh, it's best to transfer when there is severe electrolyte abnormality or uh, glucose abnormality. Okay. The second case is when uh, shock Require, there is a shock requiring more or equal to 40 ml per kg IV fluids, boluses. And the third case is um, when we're requiring care above the comfort of the hospital uh, you're working in. Okay. So, um, now let's uh, recap. We start by assessing, as we said. Does the child really need resuscitation? If yes, we give resuscitation boluses. If no, um, we check if, it, if the fluids can be given internally. If yes, we do give them uh, through NG fluids, through NG tube, I mean. And if no, then we start assessing um, before and during IV fluids. 
the assessment. The assessment includes six main points. They are the clinical assessment of dehydration. That's the first one. The second one is current weight. The third one is pre-morbid weight. The fourth is um, intake output chart. So we, we record input intake output and uh, electrolytes and blood sugar level. So these are the six most important things we should assess. Okay, so now continuing. Um, then after that, we calculate the fluid rate according to what we mentioned before, deficit, maintenance, need for resuscitation. We always assess the need for resuscitation and uh, according to ongoing losses. Okay, and then after the assessment, we choose the appropriate fluid. Normally, the standard fluid, usually it's, it's routinely, it's the standard fluid, which is sodium chloride, 0.9% with 5% glucose. And then reassess within six hours. So that's the summary of IV fluids. Now, let's uh, do some calculations. We've got a 25 kilogram child. Let's uh, calculate... Uh, the IV fluid requirement for this child. Okay, so we start with deficit. Let's assume that uh, he's got a 5% dehydration level and we don't know the premorbid weight. So what we do is we multiply 25 by 5 the percentage of dehydration and by 10 according to the equation uh, mentioned before which equals 1250 mLs. As for maintenance, so we've got the first 10 kilograms would be multiplied by 100, the second by 50, and the remaining by 20, which gives us the total, okay? So here it's calculated as 1,600 mLs, okay? Now we um, take two-thirds of this because, as we said, of the fluid retention. So we've got 1,066 maintenance fluid which will be added to the deficit fluid, which is 1,250, and then we'll calculate ongoing losses. So that's the total uh, fluid requirement per day for this child, which is 2,316 mLs per day, plus the added, the added uh, ongoing losses according to what we find. So that's it. Thank you so much for watching.